welcome back. So stay tuned if you want to learn um, about pages 168 to 178 of dun, 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 The Science of Black Hair. We'll be going over in this chapter, Preventing Heat Damage. How to prevent heat damage to your natural hair. Oh my gosh, you guys. If you don't watch anything else, this one right here, definitely worth it. All right, let's get started. I know I have been away dealing with things <sighs> a lot of stuff on the plate you guys so anyway just dealing with things thanks for all your emails you guys thanks for reaching out you guys are like when's the next video let me tell you things have been trying to sabotage this video my note card if you can see it's like all water got all over them and even through the fire I was like, I cannot let my subbies down I'm just gonna do this video as you can see my hair is tied up I'm trying to do extra cute getting ready for bed and I thought let me pull a braid out act like I did my hair but really it I'm going to bed after the video I'm gonna tuck this piece up I just wanted to look like I made an effort so anyway so let's go ahead and get started you guys this chapter is so important as you know I love this book I love a Audrey Davis Sadasoni she's the bomb.com and I love that this chapter goes over how to prevent heat damage to your hair I'm just gonna turn my phone off because it will ring um, so let's just dive right on in. So, you know, a lot of great information. If you need to pause, pause, write it down. It is so important. A lot of girls, we get our hair a certain length, um, and you try to straighten it, just have a little variety, just shake up your style, and then after you straighten it that one time, you wet your hair, and guess what? It never reverts. Your curls don't come back because you have singed it, and you have permanently broken the bonds, and basically it's like the same as having a perm almost because your hair won't coil back up, and then you have to basically cut it off. That's the only way to get rid of heat damage. So it's very traumatic. I think um, one of the people I watched, F. Grogan, just went through that. She just went natural. I think she used some heat and then she had heat damage. She had to chop it off and start all over. So, you know, it, we all go through it. This is how you can prevent it. So let's get started. She says in the book, um, once heat damage occurs in your hair, there is nothing that can be done to repair it. Okay. When hair is heat treated, the protein and the moisture linkages are broken under the intensity of the heat, and this is what causes the hair to straighten. And so healthy hair, she says, burns at 233 degrees Celsius, 451.4 degrees Fahrenheit, the same as paper. But if hair is damaged or compromised previously, it can be it can burn at lower temperatures. Any any damage inflicted on the hair shaft is cumulative, and the negative effects can build with each heat session. That's why it's important that we apply these tips. So typical flat irons um, and blow dryers operate within 100 degrees Celsius to 170 degrees Celsius, which is 212 degrees Fahrenheit to 338 degrees Fahrenheit. Although it's well beneath the burning levels, as you can see, a lot of us still suffer from heat damage. So, this is the key. Heat styling tools should always be temperature controlled. Avoid on and off switch, you guys. That's why I'm gonna get rid of this little cheapy, whatever piece of crap this is that I showed you, or that I have, this little con air. It's such a joke, you guys, it's the worst. I just bought a cheapy. It's horrible, but it's got to go because it violates some of her rules. See, this has a dial on it. That doesn't tell me the degrees. What, what, what temperature is this on? Right now, it's at 20. I don't know what degree that is, so it's got to go. Then she goes over how to, um, heat damaging the hair occurs. So, and this is key. When the heat destroys the moisture balance in the hair. It stresses the already dry, porous ends. So, heat appliances work rapidly by evaporating internal moisture from the hair's cortex. Because of this, hair should be treated with a moisturizing deep conditioner, ideally one with hydrolyzed proteins before the heat is applied. Blew my mind, aha moment. I gotta check my Shea Moisture to see if it has hydrolyzed proteins in it. But basically before you blow dry or pressure hair or flat iron it, you wanna always deep condition your hair prior to. So that was a great tip, so long. Um, in, order to reshape, in order to reshape our hair, heat disturbs our hair's natural protein bonds. Without a strong protein structure, hair can't hold onto its own internal moisture. Using heat too often can cause heat damage. 
All right, next card. Um, okay, so heat breaks. At the start of a healthy hair care regimen, for all you newbie people that have just gone natural, at the start of your healthy hair care regimen, you should give your hair a heat break and eliminate heat entirely for 6 to 12 weeks, period. Heat breaks help to reestablish protein and moisture levels in your hair and can allow the hair to regain thickness and strength. Oh, but it's okay to use a hooded dryer for deep conditioning during your heat break. After the break, you can slowly phase in heat, but no more than once per week. Alrighty. Never use heat on the hair that has not been washed in the previous one or two days. You guys, I know we are so guilty. It's a lot of maintenance. It takes a lot of time to do the hair, but all that dirt in your hair then compacting with heat is just not good. The safest way to use heat is on a lower temperature for a longer period of time. She says research shows rapidly increasing the temperature of the hair damages and causes both protein and water loss to the fiber. Use thermal hair protectant products specifically. Heat protected should have a low thermal conductivity and should be able to slow down the transfer of the heat from the heat appliances to your hair. Silicones, oils and waters all play an important role. So I'm going to read this passage because that's how good it was. I didn't even want to, you know, I have to read the passage. This is on page 170, so here we go. She says, a material's thermal conductivity rate gives us an indication of its ability to buffer and protect the hair against heat. The lower a material's thermal conductivity rate, the better the heat protection qualities it offers. Silicones are routinely used in heat protectant sprays and serums to slow down heat transfer. Because their thermal conductivity is lower than oil, they are better equipped to slow the, the transfer of heat to the hair strands. Okay, research has shown that silicones um, like dimethicone and clicomethicone are the silicone ingredients on the markets with the lowest heat conductivity and are found quite frequently in heat protectant formulations. So as you're buying your heat protectants, look for those two ingredients because those are going to slow the heat from transferring to your hair strands the best per research. Okay, she also says shampooing and conditioning the hair immediately prior to heat use provides important moisture support that allows the hair to be heat straightened with minimal breakage to the fiber. Give textured hair a moisture, it gives textured hair a moisture surplus by only heat styling recently deep conditioned hair. Once again, you want to give your hair a moisture surplus by only heat styling recently deep conditioned hair. Specific heat is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of a material one degree. Water has a very high specific heat, meaning that it takes considerable heat to increase its temperature one degree. When water is properly bound within textured hair, it acts as a buffer by absorbing the heat from the styling appliances and controlling the rate and speed at which, um, at which our hair increases in temperature. And then she summarizes it very well in this section. This is like the really good part, you guys. Silicone plus water. So she breaks it down. She says, in essence, water slows the heating rate of the hair fiber. As the temperature of the water in our hair slowly increases, it allows the overall temperature of the hair fiber to increase as well. Without adequate moisturization of the hair fiber, the hair's temperature increases rapidly. Together, silicones and water work synergistically to safely heat the hair fiber with very little damage. Moisture increases and the hair's specific heat capacity or the amount of heat required to increase the hair's temperature while silicone and oils decrease the rate at which heat is transferred to the fiber in the first place. With silicone working on the outer hair strand to slow the transfer of heat into the hair fiber and the hair's own internal moisture slowing the overall temperature increase of the strand, the hair is well protected from heat damage. Oh, love this book. Okay, so right there, you guys, boom, the holy grail. It's unlocked. So it's a formula. It's all these things that come together. So you have to have the proper moisture in your hair so the hair fiber won't heat too quickly, which can lead to heat damage. And then you want to have the silicone because it has the conductivity to slow the transfer of heat to the strand. That's why when I was in LA, I could get my hair pressed every other week or every week and my stylist would never give me heat damage. Then I got here where I live now and one person gave me heat damage immediately and I had to cut off two inches of my hair. I was like, what? What? I don't understand. So this book is worth it.
You need to get it because I, 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 all this time I've been trying to figure out how to stop heat damage to the hair and here it is. So anyway, we're going to go on. If you are going to use heat in your hair or curling iron, your hair should not be left wrapped around the curling iron and between the flat iron for more than three to five seconds. So all this, you know, no, too long. Three to five seconds, that's it. Quick passes over the sections. Um, you want to do quick passes over your sections to straighten your hair, not lingering in one spot too long. And you want to avoid lingering on your ends because they have less moisture and therefore the ends can heat quickly. You know, they're older, so you don't want to be down here forever on your ends. Um, you want to make sure that you gently clasp. Gently. I can't tell you how many times I've been places and people are like, <laughs> all on the hair. No, she said gently. Okay? Gently clasp the flat iron on the hair so you don't apply too much downward force. And if an iron is sitting too long, you want to test it on a cotton towel to discharge some of the heat. So those are all tips um, for how to use the curling iron or flat irons your hair. Now, she goes over selecting the best ceramic irons. Um, there's two categories of ceramic iron, she says. One is fully ceramic plate, and two are irons with several layers of ceramic on top, um, and the lower quality metals are on the bottom. Anyway, you guys, I, like I said, I'm sorry for the long delay. Please, please thumbs up. If this video was helpful and you're a natural girl and you want to try to teach straighten your hair, but you were too afraid to try or you've done it in the past and you've ended up with heat damage, I myself have ended up with heat damage from other people. I, as you know, I don't put heat in my hair that often because I really love my natural hair and I don't want it to like, I straighten it one day and then it, it never reverts. And I'm just like, oh, I'm devastated. So a lot of times when I want to wear my hair straight, I just throw a wig on. You know, sorry. <laughs> I know some of the brothers out there are like, oh, black women wear weave. Well, I don't want to damage my beautiful, coily, kinky, nappy hair. So if I want straight hair, I will slap a wig on in a minute. And in about half the time, the wig is shorter than my real hair. So, <laughs> so anyway, so and sometimes I'll straighten it. You know, I may do a video on that. But I'm right now trying to hit my goal. My goal eventually is mid back, which I'm getting closer to. I want to hit that sometime next year. So I'm really on protective styling right now. Um, once it's that length, I can really have the big fro I want, I can have the big chunky braid outs I want, so my mission is just to get there. So anyway, once again, if the video is helpful, please thumbs up, please subscribe. Any questions, please hit me up, and thank you once again to all my subbies that were like, when is the next review coming? <laughs> Love you guys. Okay, bye. Mwah, mwah.